get this going. Leo, welcome. Welcome. Um, so where to begin? I sent you guys an email a little while ago, didn't I? Actually, you know what? Let's do this. Let's look at the old syllabus and we'll get to the email when it relates to what we're discussing. It'll, it'll all come together. Don't worry. So here's where we're at. Um, we, it's Monday, 29, right? We have class today, obviously, we're all here. Um, RIP double crossover, Ruthless, yeah. March Madness, maybe. I don't know, can you cross over in soccer? Maybe you can. I, as you can tell, I'm not, uh, not much of a soccer player. So here's today, we're gonna talk about meditation. That'll be the main topic for today's class. And uh, then we get the day off on Thursday. You guys aware of this? 4-1, no class. 4-5, also no class. Yeah, you guys, you guys know more about soccer than I do. 4-7, um, yes, class. So that we got a weird schedule after today for the next week. We won't meet at all for a whole week. Then on Wednesday, we'll come back. Uh, it'll be a Monday schedule. So you probably already knew that. Um, as you can see, there is a little extra assignment because we have so much time off. I decided to give you an extra podcast and a reading. I think it's the only day I do that all semester. Um, and, you know, it's a podcast. And it's by Michael Lewis. You guys know who he is? Moneyball. The Big Short. Flash Boys. You guys know him? So yeah, he, he writes about uh, like Wall Street and stuff. He also writes about sports. I think he likes baseball. He's a baseball player. This is a podcast about meditation uh, in sports. So his daughter is an elite athlete. She's a softball player. And she was using meditation in sports. It's called The Coach in Your Head. It's very well done. It's very well produced. It's, uh, it's a little bit longer than the other ones, but the other one was more kind of academic. And so this is more like entertaining, but also thought provoking. So I hope uh, I hope you are entertained. I encourage you to find a day like today where it's nice outside, put on your headphones, go for a walk, listen to the coach in your head. Obviously, I apologize, Tan, that maybe you don't want to go for a walk, but you can, you know, put it on when you're like, I don't know, taking a shower or taking a bath or doing the dishes. I, maybe you guys don't do the dishes, but I do the dishes. Whenever I do my laundry, I'm often listening to podcasts. It's a, an excellent multitasking tool if you are able to sort of pay attention to one thing and then do some sort of mindless task um, without paying as much attention to it. I, I've perfected this art and I listen to the podcast all the time. So I encourage you to check it out. It's good stuff. Uh, and in addition to that, there's this mindfulness stuff that we'll start today. So that's the plan for the next couple of weeks. How's that all sound? Sound good? Cool. And then when we come back, there'll be an exam. Bum, 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 bum. So I know the last exam feels like it was just a couple weeks ago because, well, I guess it's more like three weeks ago, which is actually sort of a long time ago. Um, this one is finally coming up. I owe you guys a review sheet. I'll get that to you. If I'm on top of my game, maybe even tonight, we'll see if I can go home and muster up more work after class. Um, if not tonight, then um, certainly one week in advance of the exam. That's what I try to do for you. And then you can study over the break and uh, we can discuss any questions you have on the following Wednesday, which would be the day before the exam. So you, even though you get a little bit of a break, there's a big thing waiting on the other side, right? So please prepare. Um, I met with one of your classmates today about uh, test taking skills. And I encourage you to go back and look at your last exam and think about what happened um, and particularly, we're getting to be the short-term preparation time. What can you do to organize your notes? And just so we're all on the same page, this is what I discussed with your classmate, is download the slides, right? Because if we go into Moodle and we're clicking around and we, you know, we're trying to answer the question and we're like, okay, what was that slide from? Okay, let this load up. Take a little bit of time. Maybe it's this one. Yeah, it's probably this one. But uh, yeah, it maybe it wasn't this one. I don't know. I can't tell. Oh, no, this isn't the right one. And so you're just goofing around on Moodle. It's going to take twice as long, right? It's going to take a lot more time. So just hit this download button, save them to your computer, put them in a folder, and search through them. Um, this, I believe I already showed this to you, but I'll show you again. See if we want to look up Tevya. 
in this folder, it will tell us every slide, every day that we talk about Tevye, right? And so you can do this with things from the exam. I think this is one thing that separated those who were able to, you know, do very well on the exam from those who didn't do so well. So this is something that's really key. And now is the time to prepare your notes, right? Get ready to take the exam. And that will help you study, of course, too. When I give you the review sheet, you will be able to go through that and prepare your notes based on that, too. Um, so anyway, questions about exams and plans, anything like that? How are we all doing? I hate to... Uh, rain on the Easter parade with an exam at the end of it, but it just fit our schedule. So I had to do it. You know, take off my glasses. I feel like I'm about to fog them up. So I get fired up when I'm teaching like this. Um, okay. No questions? All good? All right, maybe I'll hit the light. So this is obviously from last time he did an assignment on this guy but we didn't quite finish going over him if i remember correctly so maybe we can do it very quickly today some of them we did we can just skip over those but um just to sort of catch up and put a cap on the conversation it was actually nice uh reading your assignments um the best ones just follow the instructions right i i asked you to talk about senzaki's life i asked you to talk about kion Right, two things. A lot of people, uh, I, I, I got an email from one of your classmates or he had a question and he's like, hey, how can I get a 10 out of 10 instead of a nine out of 10? And I helped him kind of go through the nitty gritty of everything. But the major question is where the hell was Kion? <laughs> right? If you read the instructions, I said, cite Kion, use him to explain your ideas. He used the word bodhisattva. So I gave him some credit there, but he got nine out of 10 because he didn't really explain what is a bodhisattva. You know that I know what a bodhisattva is, but I don't know that you know what a bodhisattva is, right? So you got to tell me, what is a bodhisattva? Sight Kion, explain to me, what is a bodhisattva, right? So this, again, is if you are really going for full points, um, I'm very generous with these assignments, but if you don't follow directions, then I will deduct points, but it's kind of straightforward. So, um, so that's the general feedback on that assignment. But again, just like your classmate, if you ever want very, very specific feedback about how to write better, I'm happy to do that, right? I can do that. The best way to do that is in person. The second best way to do that is over Zoom. And so that's what we'll do. Uh, the best way now to do it is over Zoom. And um, that way you can, we can have an exchange, right? You can ask a question. I can ask you a question, like what were you trying to say here? And we can work through it together. So I, I am available. I'm always available to talk about that kind of thing, to send me an email. Um, so again, I sort of fed it to you. Basically, if I were going to do this assignment, I would take this slide and say, okay, here's a list of things I could choose from to write my paper about. So let me choose one of the poems that are on the slides and then choose one of the topics that the professor very kindly provided to me. Figure out what the topics are from Kion and apply it to the poem. Now, you might be thinking, oh, that sounds hard. And I'd say, yes, you might actually learn something in the process. No, I, I hate to be condescending, but that, that's how... Um, I envisioned the assignment, right? As you could learn a bit more about any of these uh, topics and then apply it to this guy's life. Um, I think we went over some of these, I forget exactly what we went over. So I'll just very briefly go through them because I think it is worth touching on. We'll have an exam soon and I wanna make sure we're all on the same page. So this first one, um, what is going on here? We've got this nice Japanese guy. Do I give you his dates? Maybe I did here. No, I don't give you this date. So he, he came to the United States around the year 1900, right? A few years after that, maybe 1903 or something, very early on. Again, it's Jim Crow laws, Jim Crow America. Remember we talked about that. And so, you know, if there's Asian hate now, which is in sort of the conversation in America still, 13, year, 13 days ago, somebody uh, shot up the, the place of business of uh, eight people, six of which were Asian, um, and they died. Uh, so this, this kind of prejudice against Asian people has roots in this history, just like we talked about with Cass, right? He shows up in America and people were abusing him, right? He's working with immigrants from Europe and Africa. And the, he says, the person who punches me today may someday become a Buddha. What a, an upbeat guy, right? He's getting punched. I mean, maybe he's exaggerating, but well, this is what he's saying. He's saying he's getting punched. People are punching him. And what does he think about the people who are punching him? 
He's like, one day, I hope they become Buddha, right? The person who treats me with contempt may eventually become happy. I keep repeating this to myself. And so it's not like an easy lesson for him, right? This is hard for him. He's getting abused. He's having a hard time, but he's trying to practice Buddhism in the process. He's trying to imagine them being happy, becoming a Buddha, right? Reaching enlightenment. So what is it? What connection could we make here? The best ones were able to talk about bodhisattva or compassion here, right? How is this compassion? He cares about the people even when they're abusing him. That's a pretty compassionate guy. Do you know any other people who are compassionate like that? Who care about people even though they abuse him? Any famous people who died for our sins? Rise from the dead in a couple days? <laughs> that guy who's hanging in all the classrooms in our school, right? It's a very Jesus sort of moment. You know, I, I'm, I was laying it on a little thick a moment ago, right? It's a very Jesus kind of moment. Have you ever heard of turn the other cheek? Turn the other cheek. What does it mean to turn the other cheek? Have you heard this phrase before? Turn the other cheek. Uh, yeah, I think in the Bible, in the Bible, they said that when somebody slap you, mm -hmm. you have to turn the other cheek so you can slap again. Yes. So that means when somebody when somebody hurt you, you have to like do something better than hurting back the person. Yeah. Yeah. Excellent. Um, I, I think it was some politician, maybe it's Hillary Clinton or Michelle Obama. Somebody said, when they go low, we go high. That's also sort of a similar kind of metaphor, right? Where it's basically like, if somebody hits me, right? Hits me on the cheek, just like Driss was saying, I'm going to turn my other cheek and say, oh, is that all you got? <laughs> no, you don't necessarily taunt them. But you offer your other cheek and say, if you want to hit me again, I will take that punishment, right? I'll take that abuse. Um, we see that same sort of thing happening here, where maybe Sanzaki is not asking for more abuse, but he is saying, you know, I still love these people who are abusing me. Right, which is crazy, right? It's profound, it's incredible. Don't try this at home, kids, right? Because you're setting yourself up for a hard life. But Senzaki, he's trying to do it, right, from the beginning. So we see a pretty amazing thing happening here. I gave you your, uh, a picture of Rama. You might be wondering why. And it, it's a similar sort of weird battle thing. I don't know, I, it made sense in my mind at the time. We don't have to make the connection right now. Um, another poem some people wrote about was this idea of a snake the snake train, right? Big black snake. May I'll just read it to you. A government must practice its policy without sentiment. This morning, the winding train, like a big black snake, takes us away as far as Wyoming. A current of Buddhist thought. Of Buddhist thoughts. Oh, yeah. A, a current of Buddhist thoughts always runs eastward. The policy may support the tendency of the teaching. Who knows? This one's a little harder. I think some people might have searched like poem or something, and then they came to this. Um, but if you didn't read everything and listen to everything before it, it's actually pretty hard to make sense of this one. So um, I'm glad that people discovered it and thought about it. But why is he going to Wyoming? What is this talking about? He's being forced to. Yeah, why, what forced him to? World War II, exactly. So um, again, we're talking about kind of anti-Asian movements in America. These were government sponsored, right? In the 1890s, there's the Chinese Exclusion Act here. We've got Japanese people getting locked up in camps, right? It's a government policy. It was signed. A lot of people wrote a little bit of history. That was pretty cool. Um, FDR, I think it was, uh, what's the word? An executive order, I believe, um, that sent all the Japanese people to internment camps, not Germans, not Italians, yes, Japanese, right? Only the Japanese. Can't imagine why. Um, maybe they just look a little different, right? So uh, his only crime was being a Japanese person. He's getting locked up, just like Leo said. He's being taken away, put in jail. But if you read this poem, is he complaining? Not at all, right? It's, it's the same sort of turn the other cheek metaphor almost. What is he talking about? What is this current of Buddhist thoughts always runs eastward? That's probably the most confusing line. Were you guys able to figure that out, Leo? Mm -hmm. Very good, yeah. And mm 
Good. And so that is especially important for Japan. Why do you think that prophecy is important for Japan? They don't talk about it in the podcast, but now we can think about it together. Why would Buddhist teachings moving eastward be important for Japan? Where are the Buddhist teachings coming from? China, and before that? India, yeah. So there is this eastward movement, right? Moving to China, moving to Korea, moving to Japan, and then what is east of Japan? Us, Hawaii, California, Wyoming, right? So this is sort of, it actually makes a lot of sense, even though it's framed as this like mystical prophecy or something, it, it actually is kind of geographically true, right? Um, so interpreting this is hard. I, I gave you this list of things you could try. Um, I don't, maybe some people talk about emptiness. That's one way you could do it, right? You've got this difficult situation. He's being taken away to jail. We could take this difficult situation and say, you know what, I'm not going to think about it that way. I'm not going to think about this as a difficult situation. I'm going to kind of take it apart. Remember, I drew my thing up here. We're moving in this direction, so it takes things apart. You can sort of take it apart and say, you know what, I'm going to think about this as, this is a prophecy. This is destined to be true. This is why I'm here in the first place, is I'm here to bring the Buddhist teachings to the East, and the government is taking me to the East. What a great opportunity. This is going to be a great time, boys and girls. No, he's, he's not quite that enthusiastic. But uh, again, we see great bravery. We can say even strength, right? Kind of an emotional strength in the face of, of difficulty. Have, have you guys ever seen uh, Life is Beautiful? Do you know this movie? It's actually an Italian movie from early 90s, I want to say. I saw it um, in a Chinese movie theater. And I was expecting there to be English subtitles for some reason, but there were not. There were only Chinese subtitles. And so I had to kind of squint my way through that one. I, I know Chinese pretty well, but not like totally 100% great. And, you know, with subtitles, they move so quickly. You know what I mean? It's like they're on for a second, then they're gone. I, I didn't totally get what was happening in the movie. But, you know, it, it's, it's actually very well done. It's, it's um, as the title says, it's a beautiful movie. I, I won't tell you exactly what it's about, but very similar to this. Also World War II, also internment camps. These are the Nazi concentration camps, but it's a similar, similar act of trying to find light, light in the darkness. Um, and we could, if you're interested, we could discuss whether this is even a good idea, right? Because uh, on the one hand, kind of horrible things are being done. And on the other hand, uh, the people that they're being done to are finding ways to be strong and to persist and not even necessarily resist, right? This is maybe we could put it this way. This is more resilience versus resistance. You know the difference between those two words? What does it mean to be resilient? Resilient, are you guys resilient? You're not resilient, Brendan? I'd say you're pretty resilient. You're the only one who shows up to class every day. <laughs> That's pretty resilient. <laughs> <laughs> what a thing to say. Uh, let's look it up. Resilient. Oh, there's an E and not an A. I spelled it. Oh, no. If it's a noun, it's resilience with an A. That's right. If it's a verb, or sorry, an adjective, then it's an E. Um, so to be able to withstand or recover quickly from difficult conditions, right? Is Senzaki being resilient here? Absolutely. Right, absolutely. This is the story of resilience, in fact. Um, is he resisting the American government orders? No, he is not, right? American government, you know, a government must practice his policy without sentiment. So he's just saying, you know what? Fine, I get it. I get what you're doing. I understand. I'll go along with it. Um, okay, questions so far? We're doing okay? Again, this is just a little review. This one, um, some people wrote about this. It was less of a poem. Maybe we can just skip that one in the interest of time. Um, this one was similar similar themes as the winding train, right? A lot of people wrote about this one. Um, he's in jail, right? He's in the camp. You guys hot? Should I turn, open this thing? I'm getting hot. I got the sunshine and the heat seems to be going. Um, so he's in the jail. He's looking out at the sun, sun rising in the distance. He's looking through barbed wire. And it's this amazing moment where he feels kind of inspired, right? Uh, maybe I'll just read the second part. Evacuees can go no place else. 
Uh, they can admire only the gorgeous sunrise beyond the barbed wire fence, above the hills and mountains. So what, what's the point of this one? Did anybody write about this one? What's the point of this one? I know you guys did this assignment, at least most of you did, because I graded them. I know somebody wrote about this one. Chat, anybody want to chime in? What is this poem about? You can type it if you prefer. I think it is about the awakening of a kind of Buddha. Mm. Drissa was very short and to the point, almost like a poem in response to the poem. I like it. The awakening of the Buddha. There is an awakening happening here, for sure, right? Uh, there's a sense that we don't always see things clearly. And in fact, again, there's nowhere else for them to go. They are stuck. All they can do is sit there and watch the sunrise, right? If they weren't in jail, what would they be doing? Sleeping, eating breakfast, taking a shower, who knows, right? Who knows what they'd be doing? Um, but he's saying because he's stuck in jail, he's being forced to watch the sunrise, right? He's being forced, maybe sort of like Driss is saying, to awaken along with the sunrise, right? With this difficult situation comes an opportunity for reflection. Now, I, I don't want to trade positions with him, but I can even kind of understand it a little bit, right? Do you ever hear stories about people in jail, like reading a bunch of books and getting real jacked and that sort of thing, right? Now, I don't want to go to jail, but uh, at the same time, there is something that sort of comes with that opportunity. Looking past the barbed wire into a different life. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Exactly. Um, another similar symbol is the lotus flower blossoming above the muddy water right this is a classic buddhist symbol is the title of the podcast right is there's this muddy difficult water what do you think the muddy water symbolizes here muddy gross gunky water struggles yeah the suffering of life remember the buddha in his life story he comes out and he sees that suffering what happens as a result this great awakening right this awakening that is not dirtied or defiled by that difficult beginning right there's a sense that we can move past it see past it just like Kristen's saying see past it into a different life a different way of seeing a different way of being the awakening that drissa talked about so a lot of you wrote about this it, it's a i agree a beautiful image um finally there's this one which i don't think anybody wrote about but it's i think i maybe i mentioned to see when i was listening to this last week i was deeply moved I, I was walking along i was listening to this i saw an american flag and i was just like wow all right that's what this is about and i would even heard this before because obviously i assigned it to you but i somehow it didn't quite click the way that it did for me last week um i'll read it to you and i want to hear your thoughts so um it's an interview with williams he wrote this book it's called american sutra so it's about buddhism in america and this is what williams said he says far from threatening the fabric of american life Japanese American Buddhists during World War II strengthened it, right? So he's saying Japanese Americans strengthened the fabric of American life. Uh, their story stands as powerful testimony to Americans' foundational claim to be a nation of religious freedom. And Halverson Taylor uh, is the person who is interviewing him, Martine Halverson Taylor. She's a brilliant scholar. I, I know her. I, I didn't ever take any classes with her, but she's totally brilliant. Uh, and she puzzled over this too. She's like, but wait a minute. From my perspective, this is a story of oppression, right? This guy's getting sent to jail. He's being abused in all these different ways. How is this, again, and this is, these are Duncan's words, William, sorry, Duncan Williams' words. He says, this is a story uh, that stands as a powerful testimony to Americans' foundational claim to be a nation of religious freedom. How is this a story of religious freedom? Can anybody make sense of that? And it's a hard question. Like I said, a very brilliant person posed this question. Um, and I'm sure she had her thoughts, but it's a great question, I think. How is this a story of 
religious freedom. And you might even disagree, and I'd be happy to hear that too if you do disagree with this question. Is this a story of religious freedom? Maybe it's not. Does anybody want to say it's not? I would think this is irony. But go ahead, Jusa. You, you think it's what? Irony? Uh, uh, yeah. Irony. OK, can you say more? Why is it irony? Because it, it's kind of just saying the opposite of what happened. Mm -hmm. Actually, that's a great word for it. I didn't think of that initially, but I think you're absolutely right. Um, it, it's a little difficult to explain how it is ironic, but I think you're absolutely right. Um, why do, before we unpack that, and we will return to this. Brendan, what did you say? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Nice. Okay, so so Brennan's saying he buys it to the point, and if you couldn't hear him, I'm just going to summarize it. He buys it to the point like, okay, this is a resilient guy. He can put up with a lot of hardship, but to call it freedom, you know, he's still in jail, right? He, he's not able to like go out to the temple. If you remember, his scriptures were taken away from him. The, the example I skipped over, like they had to make a Buddha out of a carrot, right? And so th there's all these really ridiculous things they had to do. In a free society, you don't have to make a Buddha out of a carrot, right? You can bring your Buddha wherever you please. That's a free society. So Brendan's saying he feels like, no, this is not a story of religious freedom. And that's a compelling argument. That's kind of where I was at uh, before I heard this line. It, this made me rethink a lot of things, honestly. Um, other thoughts? So here's what I tried to summarize. This not, might not totally be clear, but I can give you my take. Um, so Williams also said this, constitutional ideas, ideals are not just words, they must be embodied. So what, what is he talking about? So we, we do have a freedom of religion in this country, right? We're all aware of that. Bill of Rights and so forth, right? Um, so we, that is a human right that is guaranteed to everybody. And we might say, but this is, Contrary to that, right? This is saying the American government, they're a bunch of hypocrites. And that's why uh, this is not a story of religious freedom. But I think what Williams is doing is he's saying the true American in this story, and again, this is relevant for our day to day, right? 13, 13 days ago, six Asian people were killed just doing their jobs, right? Why were they killed is because they were seen as peripheral somehow. They were seen as not really American. This is a real American. He was an immigrant, but he was an American, right? And when we tell his story, we are telling a story of religious freedom for an American who is finding it really much like what Brendan was saying against these odds, right? Against this system of oppression that was stacked against him. And he still found it. He embodied, right? He embodied this religious freedom that people tried to take away from him. They tried to take away his freedom to revere the Buddha, to read Buddhist scriptures, but what they could not take away from him was his ability to keep an open mind, right? He kept a free mind despite having an imprisoned body. And again, he's not the only one, right? People like Nelson Mandela in jail for so many years, there are many inspiring stories like this where they can maintain perspective despite many difficulties that would crush many of us, myself included. Um, so how is it ironic, coming back to Driss's point? I think he's exactly right. Um, it seems like a story of oppression. The whole thing is set up as a story of oppression. But what is free, he is free. His mind is free, right? It's almost like a story of enlightenment, right? If enlightenment is a form of freedom. He has found that freedom through the way he looks at the world. Do you guys buy it? Have I convinced you? You don't have to buy it. <laughs> but that, that, that's why I was moved is, uh, you know, two things. One is it's embracing him as a true American and saying he represents American freedom. I love that message, right? As it's one we need. And two, freedom comes in many forms, right? Even when the world seems very oppressive, 
as it probably does right now, there are still places we can find freedom. Uh, and, and I also find great inspiration in that. And I hope many of you did too. You know, I was reading some of your uh, posts and some of them were quite personal and also quite moving. So I, I um, you know, I enjoyed reading them. Hopefully you enjoyed writing them. Obviously there was an academic component to it too, is what I'm always trying to balance is something useful, maybe even emotionally interesting, but then also academically relevant too. Um, okay, any last questions or thoughts about all of this? Doing good? Okay, we still have a pretty good amount of time. When do we go to 50, right? Yeah, 250, okay, so we got 40 minutes. Um, meditation, this is the new topic for today, still Buddhist themed, still related to some of the things we talked about, but this is more like instructions now, right? We're kind of doing a little history story sort of stuff, maybe even some philosophy. Now this is more like practice, right? What does Buddhist practice look like? Um, maybe I can first start by saying, have you guys ever meditated? I see some nods, I see a shaking head, I see a nodding head. Have you ever meditated, Chet? All right, we're getting some yeses. So people, at, at the very least, know what this is, and some people have done it before. Um, yeah. Does anybody want to share a story? What is it? What kind of meditation did you do? And what was it like? What 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 was the what were the details? Anybody have details they want to share? Because meditation is a big word. We're gonna kind of narrow it down over the next couple of weeks. What have you guys done? No one wants to share. Okay, you don't have to share. Actually, I talked to some teacher friends of mine. I know this might horrify you, but teachers talk about teaching a lot. And uh, they're saying this question of, does anyone want to share? Never gets people sharing. <laughs> I think that's actually, that there's some truth to that. So maybe I need to change the way I ask that question. Um, so, all right, what is meditation? This is a definition. I pulled it from Kion. Uh, I didn't give the page number, so I might take off a point on myself if this were an exam. But we didn't read Kion, so I, I figured, um, it's kind of, I don't want to send you looking in places we didn't actually read anything. So I actually took it off on purpose. It's an altered state of consciousness, which is induced in a controlled manner. So there are kind of two parts to this, right? Okay, Kristen actually responded to my request. Thank you, Kristen. So she says, sitting, sitting there trying to concentrate, quiet the business in the mind, or the busyness, sorry, I thought I said business. But yes, the busyness of the mind. Yeah, exactly. So quieting the busyness, concentrating. Yeah, and those are related activities too, right? The more the busyness quiets, the more you can concentrate, the more you concentrate, the more the busyness quiets. That's a very nice way to put it. You predicted the next slide. <laughs> yeah, so what's, what's mindfulness about? Mm hmm things meaning your thoughts right just let it go yeah 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 exactly so if you guys couldn't hear leo was saying mindfulness I asked him what is mindfulness and he said you let thoughts kind of pass right thoughts come emotions come feelings come all sorts of things come but and this is the trick this is the big takeaway is you sort of observe it and just let it go right and it's hard to do, honestly, right? It sounds kind of straightforward, but just like Kristen set us up by talking about concentration, you really need to try to concentrate. It takes a lot of effort. And in fact, maybe we can just do it right now. Um, I have a guided meditation. If you are interested, we could try it. Um, obviously, if you don't want to do it, you don't have to. And maybe I can give you a little background before we try it, but... Um, well, I'll I'll start with the background, and we can we can do it if you guys want to. I get I'll, I'll ask the chat almost like an unofficial poll. Uh, do you want to meditate? And if you do, do you want long or short? What do you guys think? Long or short? Either. Got nowhere to be. We got twenty five minutes. All right, I'll let the chat think about it. So chime in with long or short when you're ready. Um, so what is mindfulness? So there's this program called Mindfulness-Based Stress Reduction. Um, it's a nice acronym, MBSR. 
And so it is this meditation technique. It's based on Buddhist practices. They wouldn't say that. Actually, this is the founder, this guy sitting cross-legged here. He says it's like, you know, Buddhist teachings without the Buddha, right? He's pulling the Buddhism out. You know, does anything look particularly Buddhist in this picture? What do you think? Does this look Buddhist to you? Cross-legged? Yeah, this guy looks a little Buddhist. This guy looks a little Buddhist. Her hand looks kind of a little, got a little Eastern flavor to it. <laughs> Put it kind of uh, strangely. But what about this guy? Does he look like he's doing anything Buddhist? He looks like he's sleeping, doesn't he? She looks pretty locked in. It's a little hard to say why. His, he's a little more slouched, can you tell, right? He's kind of more relaxed, whereas her posture looks like she's really paying attention and doing something important there. Um, so, so what is it? It's basically a secularized meditation practice. So the Buddha did not invent meditation. Uh, it, it existed before him. Maybe you remember in the life story of the Buddha, he found this meditating person, right? He's kind of intrigued by him. He tried to learn from him. And of course, meditation spread well beyond the Buddhist world, right? It's not just from India. Actually, early Christian, these desert fathers were famous for meditating. A lot of monks have meditation traditions even today. Um, so we could even talk to, you know, Father Thomas about that. Maybe he likes to meditate. So it's not to say that uh, this is a Buddhist meditation. It really, it, it presents itself as a secular practice. Um, nobody's voting on long or short, so we're going to go with the long one because I figure that's the better, the fuller introduction. We might as well go all the way. This is from a company called Headspace. And this might even feel like an ad for them because it, Kind of is. I mean, nobody's paying me. Wait, I want to show the logo. No one's paying me to do this. This is not a, I should ask them to pay me, actually. I could say, look what I can do for your brand, right? Um, and they very much are a brand. They are selling something. I want that to be clear from the front. Um, they're on Netflix. Have you guys ever seen this on Netflix? So if you're interested, it is on there. They also have an app that you can buy. And, you know, that, that's where they really get you is you subscribe to the app and then you can do all the meditations and it's very expensive. I have not subscribed to the app. I would not recommend subscribing to the app, but some people might. Um, so as you can tell, taking some time to get comfortable. This is about stress, right? So again, to tie it back to this one, they don't call it mindfulness-based stress reduction. That's sort of this guy's thing. He Again, in a very American fashion, he kind of copyrighted it and branded it his own way. Now, Headspace came along, and they're trying to get some room in the market. Um, and again, a, a lot of it comes back to stress. You know, why do we meditate? Uh, what, what Leo was describing, what Kristen was describing, um, could be applied to stressful situations, right? It helps us deal with our stress. If these thoughts are stressing us out, and if you think about it, what is stress, right? What is it that stresses out? A lot of the time it is thoughts. This gives you tools to kind of put a wedge between those stressful thoughts and what's actually going on in your mind. Um, so you guys want to try this? Let's try it. If you don't want to try it, if you feel like this is weird, I don't want to do this weird Buddhist thing, then of course you don't have to. Um, you could be almost like an anthropologist. I guess we'll get rid of that. Be like an anthropologist, which just means you're watching and observing, and you can just think about what is this guy saying, and you don't have to do any of it. So uh, it's totally up to you. Um, maybe I will pause the recorder.